my mind has turned to those early saints who are too often lost to history, those who quietly and faithfully bore the kingdom forward through far more difficult days. So many of them seem almost nameless to us now. Most went unheralded to their graves, often early graves. Some few have made it into a line or two of church history, but most have come and gone with neither high office nor history's regard. These folks, our collective ancestors, slipped into eternity as quietly and anonymously as they lived their religion. These are the silent saints of whom President J. Reuben Clark once spoke when he thanked them all, especially, he said, the meekest and lowliest of them, largely unknown and unremembered, except round the hearthstones of their children and their children's children, who passed down from generation to generation the story of their faith. Nancy Allen was born August 8, 1827 in Willsboro, New York. She was the sixth daughter and tenth and final child of Andrew Allen and Eunice Minor. Nancy is the great-grandmother of Mary Ellen Ward. Nancy was just three years old when the Prophet Joseph Smith organized the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Fayette, New York, about 300 miles to the southwest of Willsboro. Nancy's mother joined the LDS Church in June 1832. On April 3, 1842, at the age of 14, Nancy was baptized and confirmed a member of the LDS Church. Church headquarters at the time was in Nauvoo, Illinois. Just two years later, Joseph and Hiram Smith were martyred, and the saints began their exodus to Utah. In 1848, at the age of 20, Nancy married Joseph Nicholas in Parma, Ohio. Joseph was not a member of the church at the time, but he joined five years later. Nancy contracted cholera. To treat the condition, she was given medication that unfortunately crippled her legs. Joseph and Nancy crossed the plains to come to Utah around 1852. Nancy had to ride all the way in the wagon regardless of stream or mountain trails. Joseph always walked beside the oxen to steady them and to comfort Nancy. In 1854, Nancy and Joseph were endowed and sealed in the endowment house in Salt Lake City, Utah. By 1858, Joseph and Nancy had moved their family to Willard, Utah. Later, they decided to move to Alma, Idaho. On a trip between Willard, Utah and Alma, Idaho, Nancy and Joseph were coming across the flat between Snowville and Stravel. There were no settlers or homes in the area at the time. One of the horses rubbed off his bridle. Joseph got out of the wagon to replace the bridle. Before he got the bridle on, the horses became frightened and began to run, leaving Joseph behind. Nancy didn't have the reins in her hands. She tried to hang onto the wagon to keep from being thrown out. Nancy began to pray to Heavenly Father for help. Suddenly in the trail ahead stood a man. He was able to stop the team and quiet them. He replaced the bridle and handed the reins to Nancy. She thanked him and turned to see how far behind Joseph was. When Nancy turned around, the man was gone. She could see for miles in all directions, but she never saw him again. Nancy knew the man had appeared in answer to her prayer.